Walt West. I went in the service the 6th of June, 1942. For his 100th birthday, we were just trying to get Walt's old Cadillac back on the road so he could drive it one last time. A 1946 model, one of the first off the line after World War II. Take the front end that way. That old car, when we got it out, it had been sitting 45 years or better. He drove his old 55 Ford for his 99th birthday. You know who that is? <laughs> <laughs> That's you driving your old 55 Ford when you, yeah. for your 99th birthday. <laughs> but for his 100th birthday, all Walt got to do was sit in his old Cadillac. Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. It wouldn't run. And he wanted to drive it. I'm doing good physically. I, I would like to drive him today, but I... I mean, it might fire right up. It, well, once we get it free, it'll start. I plan on driving him until 105 at least. You know, <laughs> you know, until 105. That's what he said at 100. Harry couldn't get the car running for the 100th. What? For the 101st? I don't have any doubt in my mind it'll start. Now the carburetor I'm sure is all dried up. We may have to take it apart and I've got a gasket kit for it if we need to. And showing dad this his birthday card is a picture. Mom. Birthday 101 rolls around. Five generations in this family. But still couldn't get the Cadillac running. You know, it's been over a year since we got that thing out. You gonna squirt some more? Yeah, we're going to doctor it again. It can't hurt. Surely we'd have it going for the 102nd. If we can get any movement in it at all, and that vibration eventually will fatigue that rust and maybe make it turn loose. But we, it's not moving at all. Oh, yeah. with this handle, you get a lot of torque. So it's not a stuck valve. Nope, nope, it's not a stuck valve. Okay. Yeah, we've, been, we've been squirting coral underneath the head trying to get it on the stem to get it down to the guide. Looks like it's busted right there. Now our serve over here. You gonna show him that head? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, pretty head, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty. Pretty, yeah. what are you gonna do with pretty? Well, uh... See all that rust in there? Let's watch any pistons. They're froze up. Yeah, they're froze. Yeah. It doesn't matter with it, yeah. So, Harry decides to trade her the car. <laughs> to the garage at his home, 80 miles away. Let's go tell your dad that some guy drove by and offered twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> you know, tell you no. <laughs> we can go do it though. The Mills on Wheels fella came by today. He, well, he tried to buy it from Dad. <laughs> Harry pulled the engine, and sure enough, it's this number two cylinder on the passenger side. It's got moisture in it, and it's completely frozen all the way down to the bottom of the block. Oops. Walt's not going to be happy. He's been following the build. You know, with the engine being bad and all that, he just kind of, I, I kind of see that in his face that he almost just gave up and said, you know, well, that's beyond fixing. The 102nd birthday was six months away. Could they have the old caddy running by then? At the least, they would have this. A ride in Bob's old Model T, dressed up for the Veterans Day Parade. Family and friends were going all out. I, and he's looking forward to it. It's simple enough. It's not overkill. And we're just going to put them in the back windows. We got one for either side. Harry had come up with a plan B for the Cadillac. About 15 years ago, I bought this old motor down east of Lubbock, Texas. The fella had it in an old cotton gin. And hard to believe, but true. The engine that I was able to obtain was a 46 engine. So it's a 46 Cadillac and it still has a 46 engine. The same V8 that powered M24 tanks in World War II. Not sure how that helped us, but it was. Ironic. And where did you get this thing? Walmart. I saw that, the measurement of it and all, and I thought that's gonna be perfect to cover the spare tire. And what's today, he says? Well, we got a couple more days to the big day. <laughs> <laughs> this all started when the kids decided to dig out their dad's old World War II uniform for Veterans Day. They didn't realize there's a reason he hasn't worn that jacket since 1945. We're going to see if your uniform jacket will fit you. 
I didn't like anything at her. <laughs> Linda is shocked. Caught Harry by surprise too. What kind of jacket is this? Eisenhower jacket. Eisenhower was Supreme Allied Commander in Europe and wore this style jacket. Guess what theater Walt was in and who he served under. MacArthur, he told the world that we shall return when they, when he had to leave the Philippines. Well, I was with the bunch that went back when he returned to the Philippines and we took the Philippines back from the Japanese. I just knew he was in the Army, he was a sergeant, and that was kind of all I knew. <laughs> I didn't tell my kids. And he didn't ever talk about it at all. I didn't tell anyone, as we got the uniform off, that I was even in service unless they asked me. I didn't, I didn't always talk about the war. Then he made president. In 1952. Oh. <laughs> 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 I sure didn't vote for him. I, I was always for that other guy. Adley Stevenson. Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. So Eisenhower was just a name for the jacket that everybody got. Go ahead and sit down. Now we can hear Yeah, you. okay. Once Walt got that old coat on, well, he got pretty comfortable. He told us what those decorations meant. Can you see this? Uh, this got a little arrow on it somewhere. That meant we were the spearhead division in the Southwest Pacific. I was hard to this, so I uh, crossed Canada. Crossed Canada. For the United States, and he was in the Wildcat Division. The Fighting Wildcats the name of the 81st Division. Walt was in the Battle of Angar in the Pacific. Tokyo Rose said, there ain't nobody can take Angar, nobody. And they've been there 100 years. That's why she said over the radio. I heard her say that. I sat right there and listened to over on one of her favorite radios. And while she was saying that, we had already took the island. <laughs> We were already talking. Now we had to talk. so many guys on guard, I'd always think, boy, oh, wouldn't it be nice to be back in the States where I could lay down and not be scared that somebody going to kill me while I was asleep, you know? <laughs> you couldn't see them, but you hear them. You say, who goes there? And they say, oh, it's my little. You know, it was one of us. That's what the army told us. If they can not say Oldsmobile. Now, a lot of people who got shot caught it in the car, you know. And I was so awful careful with my 50 caliber. I could kill 100 men if that son of a gun by the party at the wrong time, at the wrong place. I was the only one in my battery, his quarter battery, that had a machine gun. Nobody else knew how to party. Hey, Simpson. Hey, hey. MC was there to help. Walt's friend and neighbor. We're all waiting on Bob Doucette. Benson, I brought you something. What? There's four old kids' bicycles over there on the porch. Oh, it is. And I'm going to give them away. I was going to set them out in the yard. We're going to put you in that Model T. We got to go. Okay. We're all running right. late. Bob, good to see you. Veterans Day ceremony for most people, but for veterans, it means a lot. Today, veterans get recognized for their service, but what about after World War II in the 40s? You were talking yesterday about how people will come up and say thank you for your service, but they didn't say that back in the 40s when you got home. No, I, I, never, had, I, never, I never had a one to say that. No, not even one, I can remember. Very common today, and for a World War II vet. Thank you for serving our country. May I take my picture with you? Uh, yeah. All right, let me see yeah. if I can do this. <clears throat> Ready? Yep. Got it. Oh, okay. How about oh, that? Thanks yeah. for serving our country. Oh, yeah. Without yeah, men yeah. like you. It's been a while. It's your still welcome. <laughs> you have a blessed day. It's all about you and your and your comrades. Yeah. It's all about y'all today. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Thank you, ma'am. Leo, Leo, down. 
The parade's over. What do you want? Get out of here! Get, get, get out! You're sorry now! No, you're sorry now! You're sorry now! Dad was digging in his, the pocket of his jacket. He had that jacket on when he came home to his parents' house. What's that? This is Panhandle Trailways, December the 9th, 1945. He hadn't worn this old coat since... 1945. 1945. Got the kids wondering how to get home from the war, and then what happened? I got on a boat here. It's El Paso, I rode the Amarillo. The origin in Amarillo, where he rode the bus from Amarillo, Texas. On the old Route 66, today I-40. To Shamrock, Texas. Due to a bus strike, he got diverted to Pampa. But I had to buy a different ticket in Amarillo. On Pampa motor coaches. You can't see Pampa, is what I say. Yeah. Seen here on the reverse side of the ticket. A smaller bus line, but it wasn't on track. But it wasn't going to Shamrock. Pampa, right here on these brick streets, laid down in 1927, was the end of the line. The bus turned down Russell Street. Walt got out and walked inside this building in search of a ride. He was trying to get to his parents' home, just west of McLean. I caught a ride from people in the Buick. He can tell you about every car he ever saw, touched, smelt of. Any, any car his whole life. So he gave me a ride to Shamrock. 152 east to Wheeler, then south to Shamrock. I started the hedgehack from Shamrock back to McLean, got on the old highway, Highway 66, and I got just out of the limit. I stopped and he started setting the duffel bag down, you know. And, and this was wintertime, wearing the Eisenhower jacket, no overcoat. There were several cars passing me, yeah, and they didn't stop, man. 22 miles to McLean. Well, I was still a long way from home, you know. <laughs> but there were three guys come by in the 37 Ford. You didn't have no food, They stopped. And they said, uh, where, are you, where are you going, soldier? And I said, I'm trying to get to McLean, and uh, I got, but I've got to go on a little farther than McLean because the folks live, live out there on McClellan Creek. Didn't know where he came home from or how he got back home or and that 37 ford drove route 66 right past this phillips service station a historic display today in mclean texas <laughs> you know that was nice i don't know where this is going and we're on a stretch of that old route 66 same payment that walt took in that old 37 ford they would have turned here at allen reed so small it wasn't even shown on this map, and then headed north on 273, maybe four or five miles to McClellan Creek. That's quite a ways out of the way. They had to go off the highway. Right here, Walt's dad and uncle worked for Bruce and Sons Nursery. The old house was south and east of the creek. Said, where are you going, soldier? I said, I'm trying to find my folks. I don't know exactly where they live. What's your name? I told him, that, well, what do you know them? We said, get in here. We'll take you home. <laughs> Walt's parents had moved while he was off the war, so he never even seen this house. Out here in the brush somewhere, might be gone today. They took me back to the door. My mother came to the door to see who it was, and, and, and I was just getting out of the car. <laughs> she lunged up right on me. <laughs> and she said, they thought I was still in Japan there. I was on the front porch. And the rest of them were in the kitchen. When you left Japan, you went to Seattle. I come back to Seattle. What was the name of that ship? I, uh, 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 Cleveland. 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 The name of the ship. Uh, it'd be leaving early in the morning to sort of Seattle, Washington. And we had a bad happen. The captain got on the PA system and he told us that we were in dire danger. He listened 45 this way, 45 this way. And it made it. That's how close I come to not getting home after the war. It was really more strange to come back to the United States than it was going overseas. After the war was over, every time you were like you apply for a job, they said, was you in service? Yeah. yeah. Nice I could use a man, but I'm going to hire somebody that didn't live in service because a lot of them, a lot of them don't have a job. And they need a job more than you do. Government will take care of you 
exposure. And, and I don't know where they got, everybody had that attitude. We had, we had it made the rest of life. We didn't have anything. I never got a penny out of them. I didn't get no pension. And I, I, you know, I didn't get anything. They didn't get the book taken home. <laughs> I didn't get a book taken home. I had to buy my own book ticket to get back to Belle Paso. The Army sent Walt by train from Seattle to El Paso, where, after discharge at Fort Bliss, the Army just dropped him off at the bus station. Walt was on his own to get that last 500 miles to Allen Reed. Did anybody complain? No, that's it. I know. I was glad to get back to the States. Period. I didn't care where I was at. I just got back to the States. I've never known a whole lot about his life during the war or after the war at all till you just hear lately and he talks about it a lot. Never talked about it. You never even knew that he had to pay for his bus ticket? No. Dispelling the general feeling that World War II soldiers came home to a gravy train. So, good to look at coming home through the eyes of a real veteran. Back home, people wanted to know. How, what, what, how can you look together? That's the way I had malaria. <laughs> when I, we got some water on Guadalcanal, I kind of always figured it might have been there. It took me about two years to get over there to come home. Probably a year, that's where I was in the bed. I had slept in the bed over two years. I dragged me a blanket off in the floor and lay on the floor asleep. A lot of, a lot of guys come back. <laughs> a lot of them didn't, didn't they? Meanwhile, Walt hit 102. Will it back out now? Oh yeah. Well, I'm bragging. <laughs> Let's see. Harry had the old caddy running. Hook the juice to it. I wasn't restoring the car. I wanted to get the car where it would run and drive and stop and be safe so Dad could drive it. I put it in, in reverse and it goes there and then it, then it goes back into park. I wasn't doing that last night. I don't know. Well, am I hitting something? Oh, hitting, yeah. You hit it. That's a relief. <laughs> yeah, that, that makes a little bit of a difference when you're trying to run over your, <laughs> over your safety scotch. I wonder if we can go backwards. Oh, Unfortunately, the age has deteriorated the seat covers. This old thing, you know, it hadn't moved under its own power in nearly 50 years. And so for it just to be able to move is, is an incredible thing to, for me to witness. Because from the front bumper to the back, you know, every system on it had to be addressed. Take a peek at what we did to it. This engine I had completely apart and put it all back together. Now this filter that I put in the radiator hose to catch any debris that would come out from the inside of the engine. Most of this stuff I took off of it, I put back here in the trunk. This is one of the wheel cylinders that operates the brakes. Out. But just to give you an idea of what <laughs> that's, I don't know what you call that. That's bad. This kind of stuff is what the whole car was like that. So it's, it, it's been quite a challenge just to get it going and work the bugs out of all of it. And, uh, so, sounds pretty good. Does he have any idea that this might get running? He doesn't even know it's running yet. We're going to try to surprise him with it. We're going to get him outside in his wheelchair, sitting out on the, on the carport. Hey, can you do me a favor? Run over there and tell him to come on. Brittany, Walt's great granddaughter. Meanwhile, Harriet's been parked on a side street, waiting to drive up. Okay. <laughs> with That's pretty cool, huh? Aiden, Walt's great great grandson. Got us a farm. Walt was thinking fire trucks, not his old Cadillac. MC is ready. Oh, I'm just doing right here, warming it up, waiting on him. Get happy. <laughs> yeah. And I'll tell you what, the other day, one of those went out. And, and Walt's great great granddaughter. Tell him your name. Bobby. 
Aiden is her older brother. Yep, fifth generation. What is this? You can see the Cadillac coming through the trellis. Aiden looks over at his great great grandfather. Hey, dude. Oh, we got it. Expecting to see a fire truck. Oh. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Six Cadillac. Look at that. Six Cadillac. Would you? Seven. Holy. Oh. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> I can't believe that. Okay. Poppy's too busy okay. trying to watch his mouth on the camera. Yeah, hold on. I was say, did you hear it? Did yeah, you got something? <laughs> I'm really surprised. I, I, I never see it again. I was like, it run like that. Oh, that's a nice car. Yeah, boy. Boy, I can't even hear it run. Could you drive that car? The Cadillac? I guess he's saying he's not wanting to try to drive it. I guess he thinks his legs are too weak to stop it. You want to drive it? This one? No. We need to get him in it and, and at least go for a ride. Linda. Oh. You can go for, you can ride in it. Yeah, we can ride in it. And he may want to drive it after he gets yeah. it. So, you know, you know. He doesn't have to get going very fast in it. But he can drive it around out there. And he, you know, he won't be anything to run over. So he can turn it and drive it, and he'll. I think he'll have a ball. I think he'll be so tickled. Or, <laughs> you ready? Oh, here we go. Fire in the hole. Right. Get too far away, and I was going to have to walk back. <laughs> right, we're not going to walk back. Yeah, yeah that old big long hood. <laughs> yeah, man. Quite, a, quite a vehicle. Right. Most people, you know, my age folks are gone then they regret not spending more time with them this is an incredible way to spend time with dad kind of fun in the hunt riding in the 46 cadillac with your great great grandpa yeah i'm your great grandpa great great yeah i tried it together yeah yeah oh, your mama's in the back and she's the great granddaughter uh, So I can see yeah, the road too. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no. We're going to take him out on a on a private spot. You know, that's pretty big, probably a quarter of a mile long. We're going to get you to scoot over here, Dad, in the driver's seat, yeah, okay. and get him in it, and get him his foot situated on the brake, <laughs> so he can push the brake down. And just all he's got to do is just pull it in gear, and it'll it'll roll. I mean, you know. Yeah, boy, that's, that's pretty good. I can I, I set up good straight. I, yeah. Give it a little bit of gas, and you doesn't have to get going very fast in it. Getting real comfortable for a 102-year-old who said he wasn't going to drive it today. Oh, boy, look here. Oh, man. Yeah, boy, look here. All right. Yeah, boy. Hey, you want to know how to shift this thing? It's got a four-speed. I do not. Reverse is a part. You put it in reverse and it's part. And when you want to back up, you take it out of reverse. And... Anybody want to go? Load up. You going, Simpson? Wait. We're just going to poke along. You're doing good. Don't drive. Don't go that way. Left. Yeah, boy, she got that. Yeah, we we'll turn the air conditioner on. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right, let's go this way. We're gonna go right back up there in the shade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right up here where. Yeah, hey, hey, right well, up here where Linda's at. We're hey, gonna hey, hey, run her hey, over. Hey, hey. Put her in the hey, hey, hey. Mm. Yeah, boy. Yeah, that yeah. was fun, wasn't it? Yeah, that was real fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's all right. Yeah. Like you said, we shift it down in reverse, yeah. and now it's in park. That's right. Yeah. That experience for me at my age and dad at 102 years old to be able to go do that is just it's priceless. It's absolutely. You have been over, over there in the uh, foreign countries a couple of years and then come back to the United States. While you're over there, you think, 
how great it is to be here and when you get back, you know, I mean, it's a good place. But I mean, it's not no heaven on earth. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta do something. You know, you gotta do something for a living. Well, a, a lot of things in here are just, you know, old. If people don't treat you just right, well, that's hard to handle. You know, but and, and I, I experienced that. But uh, this house has not changed much since World War II. This is a letter from Harry Truman thanking him for his service back in the day. But I, 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 I took it pretty good. I didn't blow, I didn't uh, go off the big pen or anything, you know. I, I just kind of went along with him. Mom bought it back in the 50s. You just don't take life like you did before you, you went through a war. That does change it. This was a certificate that they mailed to their parents when they went into the Army. So he got this in 1942. After you left back for a while, less than a year, you were kind of getting back with a, with a crowd, so to speak. I, I can't be that kind of light coming in there. Yeah, boy, I think I get it probably. 